Lloyd Cole and the commotions, Lloyd Cole and the commotions, Lloyd Cole and the commotions. Hey, Randy Joe here, and this is 1001 Reviews, the series where I plan on reviewing every single album from the 1001 Albums to Listen To Before You Die book. And today we are looking at Lloyd Cole and the Commotions' 1984 album, Rattlesnakes. Now, Lloyd Cole and the Commotions released this album in 1984 under the Polydor label with producers Paul Hardiman, art direction Da Gamma, nationality UK, and a running time of 35 minutes and 29 seconds. Now, Lloyd Cole is the lead singer, obviously, of the Lloyd Cole and Commotions band, and this is their debut album from 1984, like I have previously stated, that really put Lloyd Cole on the map, but only very briefly, as his career, even though he is still making music today, isn't as well known or as popular as many other artists in the singer-songwriter category, especially from the 70s and 80s era. Despite the fact that he does have the songwriting chops of many artists of that time, and in my opinion, to a greater extent than a lot of his contemporaries. The first song here, for example, Perfect Skin, is actually heavily inspired by the work of Bob Dylan, where Lloyd Cole claimed that even though it took him weeks to write something like this, it would only take a day for someone like Bob Dylan to write. But even still, this is a great song on its own and is definitely worthy of praise and it really shouldn't be downplayed just because it took a bit more time for him to write. It is still a fantastic song for any artist to go ahead and write themselves. It shows off Lloyd Cole's very witty and well-written side with lyrics such as, She's got cheekbones like geometry and eyes like sin, and she's sexually enlightened by Cosmopolitan, which is just a fantastically well-written, poetic-like line that honestly does feel like something that Bob Dylan would write. And this kind of lyricism is expected throughout the album and is pretty much heavily carried through from front to back with this album really showing off just the overall talent of Lloyd Cole as a songwriter. Another great thing about this song is the very country twang to it, but it's almost done with a indie pop filter layered over top, creating a nice balance between the two and a pretty good blend. The second song, Speedboat, is much more slow and meticulous than the first one, but is still very much a Lloyd Cole song in just the way he sings in a very matter-of-fact sort of way. None of the lyrics here are too abstract, or too coy, like the opening track here, Perfect Skin, but still is a very poetic type of song that sort of tells things in a very straight and blunt way. And songs like Speedboat, for example, have a great atmosphere to them, really having this airy and open atmosphere that is just so incredibly perfect with the tone of voice that Lloyd Cole has. And this is further built upon on the song Down on Mission Street, the fourth track, which has perhaps, in my opinion, one of the greatest sense of atmosphere in the whole album. As it's got this twangy, tranquil, Japanese-like guitar work that works so well with Lloyd Cole's voice and still also carries on an almost country-like twang. It really blends together all these different atmospheres and environments to create a very unique blend. And in doing so, Cole manages to capture this almost reminiscent feeling of nostalgia. Despite not necessarily having a specific point in time to be nostalgic about, you still feel this sense of nostalgia throughout. And instrumentation plays a very important role throughout this entire album too. For example, on the song Forest Fire, it is a bit more heavy-handed especially at the three minute mark where Cole completely breaks away from the track and instead is very much heavily focused on this instrumental guitar work, which is much more explosive than the previous three minutes of this track and greatly parallels with the overall theme of the song of love being like a forest fire. And I guess at this three minute mark, this forest fire has completely taken hold or this love has taken hold and exploded and erupted into something more and spread even further, which even though this is a very simple metaphor, it is still very witty and written in a very naturally interesting way. And going back to instrumentation, like I said, with this three minute mark of explosive sounds, it is very interesting that Cole is able to then on the seventh track, my personal favorite possibly, with the song 2CV, he manages to completely almost remove instrumentation altogether as this song is extremely acoustic based. And again, carrying on themes of love, this time about lost love, and it is told in a very simplistic and musing-like way 
over top of this smooth and gentle guitar work that is just very gentle and relaxing to the ear. He speaks about the time that he feels like he has spent with her was even though it is over now. It's a very bittersweet song about lost love too as he is not speaking in a bitter way or in a longing for her sort of way but instead of a thankful that it happened at all kind of way. There is no sense of bitterness but overall just a sense of joyness to it and it is quite bittersweet in its overall tone. But even though Cole manages to, throughout this album, keep things fairly consistent, that doesn't always necessarily hold true. As the eighth song, Four Flights, is really the song that, for me, personally stands out as the weakest. Because up until this point, Lloyd has managed to go into very different directions and different sort of styles while maintaining his very sharp and interesting songwriting. But with Four Flights, it is almost like he is retreading on what he's already done. There is this very heavy use of a country twang again over top of the track and Cole's delivery this time is much faster than what he normally would relay and I think the faster delivery plus this almost unauthentic sort of country twang on top really creates for a much weaker track. I'm not a big fan of the way Cole sings and performs in this one. I feel like his performance is significantly weaker than what we've heard so far. It's almost like at this point he's imitating the country sound rather than doing something interesting or authentic to it. But thankfully he ends off this album with the song Are You Ready To Be Heartbroken, which I would say is actually my favorite. I know earlier I said 2CV was, but this one here is definitely the standout track for me, one that I've consistently and constantly gone back to as an individual track because it is just such a fantastically simple song, yet a very blunt song. In this song he is speaking almost to what seems like his former self saying even though you seem so optimistic and you have such an ego and such an amazing passion for life are you ready for the heartbreak that is to come because heartbreak like with most people is something that will really knock you down a peg or two. It'll break your ego, it will shake your life up, it will really change your view of the world and he is almost a warning and in a way, kind of poking fun at his younger self for being so naive. And Cole performs this sort of song with a very gentle backup sort of vocal and this fast paced guitar, which all really do come together in such a very sweet and longing and heartbreaking track as things sort of end off. And for an album that is so full of love songs, this one really stands out as the best of the bunch, despite the fact that all the other love songs on here are quite remarkable still on their own. So overall, this album for me was very interesting. I am glad I heard an artist like Lloyd Cole and the Commotions. It's definitely going to stick with me, and it really remains in the head quite heavily, I would say. And the influences here throughout the album can be felt. I think there is a Brian Eno, almost Talking Heads influence on a lot of these tracks. I would say this album is actually like if you took Talking Heads True Stories but made it actually good. That's what this album would be. <laughs> and over the course of just these 10 tracks, Cole makes his influences known as well, heavily alluding to his references and influences such as On the Waterfront, Simone de Beauvoir, Leonard Cohen, Grace Kelly, Truman Capote, Arthur Lee, and Norman Mailer, just to name quite a few of the influences that are on this album that get name dropped very casually by Lloyd Cole. And none of these name drops feel forced in either. It feels very important to Cole to make mention of these people, but at the same time really add more depth and character to these tracks rather than feel almost like shoehorned in references. And so all this coming together, I really have to say that the soft rating of this album came to an 8 out of 10, and the hard rating I will also say is a 8 out of 10. And I've gone back and forth. Is this essential? Is this non-essential? I've still kind of going back and forth even though I love this album so much. I'm not sure it is something that is absolutely essential for a die-hard music nerd. Is this something, anything new that they haven't heard? Is this something that you must hear before you die? Um, I would say no. I would say this is a non-essential album. However, even though I definitely enjoy this album and love so much about it, for now it will be a non-essential and maybe one day that will change but I don't see anything about it that is too significant that it must be listened to before you die. Anyways, that pretty much does it for this review. Let's see what the next album we are listening to is in the 1001 albums to listen to before you die book. All right, random number generator one to 1001, generate. 
516, which is going to be the album. 516 being Malcolm McLaren, Duck Rock. Not familiar with that one, but that is the next album we are listening to in the 1001 Albums to Listen To Before You Die book. As always, if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe if you want to follow along in listening to every album from the 1001 Albums to Listen To Before You Die book. And as always, my name is Randy Joe, and I am signing off.